Salutations, dear viewer! Yes, that's right! It's what you've been waiting for! Boba Bo the Fortune Teller! Get ready for Rock, Paper, Scissors, or Ram Shambo, as they might say in Japan, Biggs. Sure. Shout out to D.A. Manual for revamping the Nostalgia Biggs intro, and I'm just gonna keep using that, because it's awesome. And if anybody out there ever gets inspired to make some retarded intro, just send it to me, and I'll, I might <laughs> use it on the show and give you credit. Fuck it. Yeah, we love free content here. <laughs> sure. I mean, I mean, it's mostly just them taking my content and putting it to a song that somebody else made. But sure. <laughs> Lots of hard work. But hey, you put in more editing than I'm ever going to put in again. To anything. <laughs> Biggs, do you want to play a game real quick to start off this episode? Sure. Okay, it's called The Next Five Words That Come Out of Your Mouth Will Be the Title of This Podcast Episode. The monkey and Biggs show live. But let's get let's get a take two. Let's try again. <laughs> that's a rough one. I mean, I did read the the title. I mean, I did read. Okay, that's the title. I mean, I did read. I think Eggy was better at this game. Well, his mind works in marvelous ways. <laughs> I even have to like slide something out of the way so I could actually see what it was called. You gotta slide just... into the mystery. True. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> uh, Biggs, last last episode we brought back and really revamped and restarted a segment called the Pathetic List, and I thought, fuck it, let's just do it again, right? So we're gonna do a bit of that today, and then uh, after two months of no JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, we are going to be reviewing the first five episodes of. What is part two called, Biggs? Uh, Battle Tendencies. First five episodes of Battle Tendencies coming to you soon. Uh, but I think we should take a look at the pathetic list, Biggs. And I, I did make the list a little more presentable with uh, <laughs> some sort of graph. So, graph. yeah, you know, just a, a table with, with two sides, you know, it, <laughs> some sort of graph. Fair enough. I mean, that... Is everything that you need to have a graph, I guess? I, I don't know. All these math and technical jargon, Biggs, it's above my pay grade. But uh, here's what we have so far on the pathetic list. Number one, or maybe we, let's start from the bottom with the least pathetic thing. It is Biggs Biggsington with 27 pathetic points. And then uh, above him with 65, so quite a big jump. We've got cargo ship crews who crash into bridges. I, th uh, I think so. So I think the word you were looking for is table. Sure. Doesn't matter. I thought you were going to correct me for not identifying them as the Indian cargo crew. And that was your, that's why you were upset, but I guess not. That's uh, then, fine. then we have me about halfway up the list at 74 pathetic points, which is fair. I mean, I should be higher, but the fact that even the highest thing is only like 11 higher than me are, you know, it's not a good sign. Why does Monkey shapeshift from looking 17 in some streams and 32 in others? Well, which is it today? Do I look more 13 or 32 or 17 today, Biggs? Uh, I think you're looking your age today. 28? Ooh, that's a rough age to look. <laughs> I've heard that we have like a foot in the grave. Every comment on the last episode is like, oh, you guys are becoming boomers. You're so old. Biggs is getting all his news from Facebook. And I'm like, wow, like... These kids are in for a, a rude awakening if they think 28 is actually old. No, it's even worse. I'm getting my news from X. <laughs> but your ex is giving you news? How does your uh, wife feel about that? You shouldn't well, be talking to your exes that much, Biggs. You got me there. Good zinger. Dang. <laughs> I walked right into that one. I don't know. Will it, will it ever take off where people actually call the site X, or is it always no. just going to be Twitter? <laughs> there's, n there's no chance. That's why you shouldn't even use it, because then you can get zinged. Uh, sure. Riley and Friends gave us two bucks to say good podcast. Thank you. Uh, next up, with 77 points, it's the Christ is King crybabies. So people who call it anti-Semitic when you say Christ is King. 
Uh, and then disabled DoorDash demanders at 84, people who think that DoorDash is a human right because of their disabilities. Uh, most of us thought they were pathetic, and I still agree. <clears throat> and at the top, prankster influencers, which was your yep. pick, Biggs. So technically, you're winning the pathetic list right now. That one might be hard to beat. I mean, I feel like a lot of the ones I wrote down for today should be cold takes. I feel like they should get pretty high up, but who knows with this crowd? I don't know. Somebody said, Riley, you're lucky there's no thumbs down. So they wanted to thumbs down his super chat. A toot has now been a member of the measly few for seven months and wants to know how high am I on the pathetic list? Should we put toot in real quick as today's warm up? Uh, I mean, if you want to give them the satisfaction of being on there, sure. Uh, I'm still feeling kind of salty for ruining our BoJack podcast, so I feel like no. uh, that's a, <laughs> a good reason to put her on the list, right? Like that's pathetic. We made plans. Yeah. You, me, Toot, Hartsy, and maybe Florian. We're going but then to. Then I have to be reminded of their existence every time we do the pathetic list. Sure, why not? Throw it on there. Throw up the poll. <laughs> Well, we have to talk it out first. You know, the pros and cons of Toot being <laughs> There's no talking pathetic. this out. It's <laughs> plain and simple. But people might not know who the fuck this is. Like, this is the most obscure side character okay. of an obscure YouTube channel that right. you could possibly be. Who fucking Just knows who Toot is? Just in case somebody in the, the monkey and Biggs chat who doesn't know who Toot is, the only person they talk about all the time in both of our discords... <laughs> go ahead and give them the lowdown of who Toot Honestly, is. Honestly, I don't think Toot has been discussed in my discord in maybe half a year. And ever since Heartsey and his girlfriend dipped out of my Discord, I've never seen any arguments or anybody being upset. Like it's uh -oh. it's like a utopia now. Like all the trash has been filtered out and only good people remain. But yeah, we were gonna do this BoJack Horseman rewatch podcast so Toot could explain why she hates it and, and she bitched out on it. So that's pretty pathetic. We're still using that term when you dip out of something. I love that. Wait, isn't that a, is that not a phrase? Did we make that up? I don't think we made it up, but I remember whenever we'd invite friends over in high school and they said, no, we'd say that. No, we'd say that they're bitching out. Yeah. Oh. That's what you said. Oh, I thought you said dip out or so. Okay. I'm, I mean, I don't even pay attention to the words I say, Biggs, so you do need to remind me. Okay, yeah, anything else about Toot? Uh, Toot is trans. That's not pathetic. That's brave and powerful. Well, they were trans and then not trans and then trans and then not mm. trans. So extra trans, I guess? Yeah, I mean, that's the definition of the word trans, right? Just switching back and forth. Although maybe it is pathetic that you can't just put your foot down and decide and to be so loosey-goosey. That well, is like it... a big attention grab. Like, hey, everybody, I changed my gender for the third time this month. Give me some yeah, likes. I was going to say... Uh... It's probably more so used, um, I don't know how to explain it, I guess, but like whenever it's, uh, why am I not thinking of this word? Like whenever it's good for them, you know? Convenient? Whenever, convenient, that's the word I'm looking for. Classic word. Whenever it's convenient. Okay, know, is that I'm enough? I English, especially when I'm talking. I'll just randomly forget the most simple, like, basic like English words all the time. So. Well, that's fine from you. That happens to me, and I studied English in college and got a degree in it. So at, at least it's way more pathetic when it happens to me, Biggs. You, <laughs> you know, you're, you're half Mexican. You have a right to forget English True, once it's in a not while. My, it's not my first language. Stupidity okay. is. Okay, I'm putting just the word toot. You're voting yes or no. Yes means she belongs on the pathetic list. And no means no, she does not. Monkey, how the fuck do you flip your furniture each stream? It's a lot of work, but it's worth it. Okay, the poll is live. Scared of trains? Wait, is somebody tra train phobic in the chat right now? We just looking at the number, Biggs? Yeah, I'm just watching <laughs> it. It's not high enough. Uh, I mean, I've got a bad feeling it's going to be lower than me. <laughs> I mean, well, currently it is. <laughs> I don't want to be more pathetic this, than two. Is this what you wanted? This is what you asked for. Uh, can I can I also be on the list as Simi and Jimmy? Because maybe he's less pathetic than Monkey Jones. <laughs> and then just uh, throw real me in there too for good measure. Yeah, and it'll probably be increasingly more pathetic. Like, ah, oh, he we'll keeps just... coming back. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps trying to make shit. What a fucking loser. Simi and Jimmy's seventy five. Real you is seventy six. <laughs> 
<laughs> the slow climb. Uh, well, it looks like Toot is going to uh, get a score of 73, which is one point below me. Uh, now it's even 72. When, when do we end this, Biggs? After how many votes? Uh, usually we end at half, and when you said 73, it was about half. Well, now it's at 71, so... No, they, they need 73, not that low. And <laughs> it's 71, man. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? I'm not happy with it either. This is actually pretty terrible for me. <laughs> I feel like you deserve it for pushing the idea of doing this. Okay. Okay, Toot is 71. Pathetic points. Cool. Okay. That was a good warm up, everybody. Glad that we're doing this today. Uh, Biggs, would you like to bring one in, or should I begin? Uh, sure, I can kick it off. Okay. Like I said, mine are probably cold takes, so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, my first one is people who talk during a movie in a movie theater. Mm. What's so bad about that? Because as you may recall, I, Biggs, we spent I a lot think... of time going to Medea films together in person, and it was almost exclusively because we wanted to hear the people talking in the theater. My, my idea of going to the movies is I'm going to pay money to go see this movie because I'm either excited for it coming out or Patchy has talked me into going with you guys as a group. Or I get tricked by you into thinking I'm going to see... What was that movie? I can't remember. I what tricked movie you into seeing a movie. You tricked me into seeing Minari. You don't remember? Why would you need to be tricked? I didn't know anything about the movie. I was told I was going to see like some other movie, and I. It's a delightful and... tale of a young Asian boy making his grandmother drink his piss. It's beautiful, Listen, and my music. my fucking friend Skip Schwink is in the film, Biggs. Did you know that? I'm friends with an actor who's in that movie. Wow. He's gonna. I'm, nice. I'm literally recording trash rats with him and Aggie tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> literally. Nice. But go on. But, Tell uh, me more about how Minari sucked. No, I was gonna say I ended up liking the movie, but that was an, the way that you drug me out there. I can't remember what movie it was. I wish I remembered what movie I thought I was going to see. But anyways, if I'm, I go, I don't go to the movies very much anymore. So when I do, and I'm paying money to go see a movie. And somebody's just like talking in the next row. It makes me furious. Like, shut up. Why are you deciding to go to a movie to just talk through it? I think you're it's being pathetic. selfish, Biggs. I mean, what are they saying? Maybe there's a medical emergency. Maybe that their oh, opinion well, on the film needs to be heard at that moment before I'm selfish. they forget it. They also spent money. I forgot. They spent money to come and ruin my experience. Yeah. You know, everybody paid <laughs> an equal amount for the ticket, so it's their space as well. Uh, I made the money to buy the ticket, and then it got ruined. <laughs> like, why? Yep. I made just the money to buy the ticket to see that movie in theaters twice. Just, Night, uh, Nightcrawler, of course. Just put up the poll. I don't think there's any explanation of how or why this is pathetic. And like I said, I'm hoping but, these wait, are all cold takes. But what is pathetic about it? I can see it's annoying. And somebody in the chat said, how is this any different from the biggest problem in the universe? We're not talking about things that are problems. We're talking about things that we find pathetic. There are lots of problems in the world that aren't pathetic, like, like uh, billionaires who take advantage of people and r rake in the money. That's a problem, but that's not a pathetic person. That's a fucking Chad, you know? I find the lack of self-awareness pathetic. For, for movie me. talkers? Yes. Okay. Movie theater talkers. Yes or no? Does it belong on the pathetic list? Yeah, the dank is right. Is this, is this your way of just putting black people on the list, Biggs? Like, you're too much of a coward to say black people, so you have to fucking do your uh, proxy words here? Movie theater talkers? That's the new N-word? I think that just exposes their line of thinking. <laughs> hmm. I've been... Okay, so I'll put it this way. We used to go and see a lot of what we would call black movies when we were in high school. Now, why would we call them that? What was so black about them? Well, I mean, most of them were like Tyler, like Tyler Perry movies. And what was the other guy that made all those movies? Um, I can't remember. And we went and what, saw... Yeah, one of the peels. You're like, we're gonna go watch like a black horror movie or something. <laughs> it was uh oh, like uh, 
Get Out. Get Out, yeah. yeah. I mean, I so wouldn't like, classify that as a black movie the way I would a Medea movie. Yeah, but uh, in the same way, when we went to the movies, we expected it. But it's like, I feel like that's not even where I hear the most talking. It's like when I go to some other random movie and there's like a bunch of high schoolers behind me, like why? Why not just stay home and hang out and talk there? Why do I have to hear about your high school drama at the movie theaters? Are you going to imply we never once have been guilty of this, Biggs? Well, typically at the movies, I sleep, so. And you talk <laughs> in your sleep, too. I... That's one bad. That's probably the reason I don't go to the movies much anymore. Is for some reason when I recline, I just pass out no matter what now. So it's almost <laughs> a waste of money for me to go to the movies unless it's like really engaging. Like what was that? Uh, the other movie about was it like the Green Knight or something? I remember being like slightly intrigued by it, but I got to such like a dry point where I passed out <laughs> for the whole movie. Same thing happened when I read the book in college. What a snore! You know, I, I skipped that and went straight to Beowulf, and honestly, much much better. I think Movie Theater Talkers is going to score at 64 pathetic points just under cargo ship crews who crash into bridges. Did it just change at the last second? No, it did not. It's still 64. Okay. Give me one second to update this great list. Okay, there we go. List is looking mighty and good. Uh... Uh, I think uh, all the ones I'm bringing in today were inspired by my, well, all but one, because I had three. Maybe I'll only get to two of them, but uh, most of these are inspired by Florian. And the first one, I'll ask you this, Biggs. Have you been watching this new show called Shogun? I have not. I've seen some videos on it. I've been wanting to watch it, but I haven't actually seen it yet. So I'd say it's it's probably one of the best seasons of TV we're going to get all year. Uh, without a doubt, it's based on a book, and they're only doing one season, so we're getting a complete story. It's not going to be some George R. R. Martin bullshit where, oh, we ran out of source material. No, like they have a vision, and they're making this great period piece in Japan, and it's a it's a great work of art, and I'm really enjoying watching it. I have not watched the new episode yet. No spoilers in the chat. Uh, so I recommend this show to Florian, my dear friend Florian. Because I, you know, I want to enrich his life. I want him to experience culture and good art because he just watches children's cartoons all day. And he takes a look at it and uh-oh. The problem with the show that takes place in Japan is that 70% of it is in Japanese with subtitles. And Florian says... Oh, I, I cannot watch anything with the, the subtitle. I don't want to read. So I'm putting on the pathetic list people who refuse to watch anything with subtitles because they don't like to read. Yeah. Man, there's been so many times where I've, like, recommended a, a show to someone or an anime, and they're like, oh, I, I'm going to watch it dubbed because I don't want to have to read. I'm like, but the voice acting is so good. Even though I can't understand them, yes, they're right there. I can't understand them. But still, the voice acting, I feel like, is way better sometimes in the sub versions because for whatever reason, when they do the dub, it's like somebody sitting there bored reading a script sometimes. And they're like, yeah, I just don't want to have to read. Or, oh, I, I can't keep up with the subtitles while I'm watching. I'm like, how and if i mean somebody having a slower reading comprehension being unable to keep keep up with subtitles while also trying to see the visuals of what's happening i i get that as an excuse i'm not gonna i'm like my both my parents will probably fall into that i don't try to show them anything with subtitles because and, and also a lot of people like to you know look at their phone and play with their balls while they watch tv so so they want it to be in their language but for a show like shogun where it's like half and half. Like you, you can't do a dub of this show. This is the only option for consuming it. So for things like that, I think it's especially pathetic. Like, you know, I'm not going to shit on somebody if they prefer an English dub of an anime. Because like somebody in the chat is saying, bo 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 the English dub holds the fuck up. And they had to translate and come up with a bunch of new jokes that didn't work. So sometimes they put in good work. Fair enough. 
Uh, should we just put Florian on the list? That's a good idea. Randy the Wild Horse says, I don't understand most of what I just read. So by calling these people pathetic, am I just shitting on people with slower reading skills, Biggs? Maybe, I guess. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I agree with it. I agree that... Uh, I that is know. pathetic? Yeah, people that can't read subtitles just... It's not hard. Yeah, and I remember like, when lazy, then when Parasite won. won Best Picture, the director was up on stage at the Oscars saying, "Ah, oh, so many people missed my great movie because of this the one inch barrier of subtitles." You know, I guess he's he's literally measuring how tall the words are on the screen or something. But it, it is it's a one inch barrier that is restricting people from experiencing the entire world over's culture and art. And if you just don't like reading, pick up a book and practice, I guess. Randy, I'll yeah. send you a copy of The Triflers. <clears throat> so I think, honestly, the first time I was really exposed to watching like movies from other cultures was when you showed me that movie, uh, The Raid Redemption, I think mm -hmm. it was called. Do you remember that movie? It's like Indonesia. Oh, how could I forget? And The Raid 2, was... it goes even more crazy an amazing movie and it's like it's probably something i never would have watched before because i'm like well they're talking something i don't understand and it's like well duh there's subtitles but you don't really think of it that way you're like i want to watch something i can understand but then it's like you read the subtitles and it gets to a point where it doesn't really matter that they're speaking another language you're just watching an awesome movie <laughs> yeah and thankfully thankfully for that one like 90 percent of it they're not even talking they're just like fighting in hallways and shit so you don't have to yeah. distract yourself with text and miss out what's happening at the same time yeah but then i I'd, I'd say from there it got me into watching different movies from other cultures and stuff and now i would say like some of my favorite horror movies are like japanese or korean have you like seen a, the naroi i don't think that doesn't sound familiar. No, yeah, we, we that was a recommendation from Weekend Warrior. So we did an Is It Kino on it, and Florian said that he, since it had subtitles and he didn't want to read them, he just skipped through the movie and he, he didn't even watch it. He just skipped to random points and, to see what was happening. And then he came on and expected us not to to scream at him during the review. So <laughs> maybe I should was put Florian good? on the list. Uh, it was pretty good. Yeah, I liked it a lot. But it's very hard to find is the issue. I'm, I'm going to put this poll. Let's see. Uh, how do I want to title this to make it fit on the list? Subtitle Crybabies. Sure. <laughs> Just put Crybabies after everything. <laughs> yeah. Reading subtitles Crybabies. Let's go. Sub defenders are as bad as dub deniers. Hmm. Do you agree with that, Biggs? I feel like it can be. Like sometimes people get a little too. I don't know. Like the people that you expect to see on Reddit uh, saying, "Oh, if you don't watch it with the the original language, then you're not even experiencing it at all." You'd probably expect them to kind of look like us, like greasy, fat unkempt bearded males you know and we're pathetic so of course those people would have to be yeah i i will always defend sub to an extent but it's like i don't know some people just get like actually hurt that people don't watch sub <laughs> i just feel like not in every case because there are like dubs that obviously do really well like you were saying with boba Bo, but i feel like a lot of the the original like voice acting should be respected too and like experiencing like the original vision i guess for how the characters would like talk and carry themselves i think it's really cool to experience okay this currently has 76 pathetic points uh now it's 77 tied with christ is king crybabies well i have i'm really tongue-tied today if you can't fucking tell but uh, we're gonna have two crybaby spots at 77. Should I put this above or below Christ is King Crybabies, Biggs? Um, I think we had said, like, if it ties, we're just going to put it above, right? Cause it, oh, you can put it either way. It. It's up to you, Biggs. What do you think is more pathetic? Subtitled Crybabies or Christ is King Crybabies? Well, like we said before, they're both the same number, so it's not like one of the Yeah, other. so just we like... get to choose. <laughs> this is our power. Just put the, uh, the new ones underneath the old ones. Okay. 
so we can always keep track of like, oh, this one was here first, you know. Cry babies. Okay. That is a good point. We we want to know what order things are put on the list. That is true. I did get a couple super chats before we go on to Biggs's next entry. Uh, Riley says, excited for trash rats. Too bad Rusty can't make it. He probably forgot that goofball would lose his head if it wasn't attached. Rotten Apple says, better not post the Wheel of Fortune with Eggy Boy. And then he also said, Florian's a massive redacted for calling out Eggy. <coughs> I mean, calling out Eggy, there's not really much to call out. He just has, like, a bad take. Uh, do you want to get a, a free 100 and just put Florian on the list? Sure, I'll, I'll use <laughs> my turn for Florian. What? What's pathetic about him? <laughs> uh, he... He got mad at Eggy. Like, how do you get mad at Eggy? That's pretty pathetic, right? Well, let's see. Eggy, he, you know, sometimes when he, you hang out with him, he will get a little too drunk, and then he'll be streaming <laughs> at 3 a.m. when you're trying to sleep at your computer, and he's incoherently drunk and screaming, and the whole neighborhood can hear it. I, you know, if that happened to Florian, I could see why he would complain. Maybe that happened to him. It could have. <laughs> So, uh, so anyways, my next one was going to be... Are we going to let them vote on Florian? Oh my, do you want them to or not? Yeah, I'm waiting for you to debate why he's pathetic. I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, Thoughts on see. Diggers? <laughs> Should Diggers be on the list? <laughs> right next to the movie theater talkers? Wow, for some reason it scored exactly the same as movie theater talkers, huh? Interesting. <laughs> Maybe we'll get Uncle Zeb on there for that one. That'd be good. So no other reasons why Florian's pathetic, huh, Biggs? I mean, he's a he's a self-made millionaire. He leached off the back of a guy who was making the Binding of Isaac and said, "Hey, I'll I'll do some programming on this, and then tell everybody I made it, and then every other incarnation of the game will be done without me because I was not actually all that necessary, evidently." But uh, now I'm a multimillionaire, I'm a landlord, and I continue increasing my wealth by taking advantage of people who need uh, apartment housing. Uh, he, he funds the local escort economy. You know, so many women would have less euros in their pocket and less cum in their socket, if not for Florian. True. Um... I guess is this they, a normal thing that friends do? Like when the other friend's not there, like make a list of things that are pathetic and then talk <laughs> shit about them to put them on the list? <laughs> I was going to say, uh, I think his biggest crime is his take on Toot. What? He likes Toot? Yeah. Weren't you telling me at one point that he said uh, he hates take toot. toot for a spin? Well, I don't know if you know this, Biggs, but he, Florian, I'm not going to say he came out of the closet, but he... He said he's 20% gay and he has a grinder account. And on our Bazinga Boys podcast where we are reviewing Young Sheldon, he is giving us weekly updates about his grinder pursuit of a femboy. So, you know, that's I'd honestly I'd rather have an Austrian femboy on grinder than toot. Fair enough. <laughs> so, so start voting then or yeah, we'll okay. just leave it I'm hoping this will be the lowest one, because you know what? He's a hero. Florian Himsel. Let's take a look. Yeah, 20% gay. Uh, Rotten Apple says, Better not misread my super chat about the Wheel of Torture, boy. P.S. Tell Eggy that we miss him and he needs to stream. Uh, I, I think after his near-death experience crashing his car, he did get reinvigorated to want to stream more. So you'll see him again, and I'll be doing trash rats with him tomorrow anyway. Uh, but we we do not have a wheel to uh, post yet. We, we're still working on that wheel. <clears throat> uh, Riley says, what percentage of movie theater talkers don't know how to change the batteries in their smoke alarms, Biggs? It's funny. I've been seeing a lot of uh, <laughs> pretty funny videos on different stuff where it's like, 
oh, I, I listen to like white noise while I'm studying or something. And it's like, you know, the noise of Karen's yelling for managers or something. Oh. And then somebody else is like, oh, yeah, I just enjoy reading to black noise. And it's just that noise of the smoke detector <laughs> with no battery. Hmm. How's that black noise? Huh. How how would noise even have a color? That's true. It's like it's waves of sound. They're not visual. But anyway, Florian Himsel has a score of 73, which makes him less pathetic than me by one point. So he's more pathetic than two. Oh, he went up to 74. Okay. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> right when I hit end pull, it goes up and down. Where did it end up? 74. Oh, lucky me. Me and Florian are equally pathetic. Wow. And I don't even have millions of dollars to show for it. So I, I think I should be above him on the list. We did set the precedent of putting it below, so. You're still one above. Okay. But the same number. Same number. Uh, I, I was going to do it. two ties already. That's crazy. Well, eh, there's only 100 numbers to choose from. And we're going to end up probably with like a million ties eventually. Uh, this next one, it's not going to be about Florian, okay? I'll, I'll save that one for later before we... Because we're running out of time. we got to do one more and then go review JoJo. Uh, on Friday, I did a stream called Chillin' Like a Villain. And we got bored and started doing a little bit of throwback Thursday on a Friday. And we watched some podcasts I did in 2017 with my dear friend Cy. And Sai was trying to convince me, or at least explain his fetish for, and you're not going to believe this, Biggs, uh, lolies. Some people call it lolly, but last time I checked, the novel's not called Lolita, you fucking idiots. Uh, that's just a pathetic list entry. People who are into lolly are lowly. Is it Lolicon? Lolicon? You, you call them idiots and immediately say it. Well, it's interchangeable, thing. Biggs. I mean, I, I sound stupid saying lolly because that's a fucking sucker that you, it's candy. Well, the other thing that makes it awkward pronouncing it like that is because that's uh, what some people have their kids call their, their grandparents or whatever. Lolly? Lolly and Pops. Yeah. What? <laughs> that's the name of a store at Jordan Creek Mall, Biggs. <laughs> yeah. Lolly and Pops. That's what that's referencing? I thought it was about Japanese child porn. <laughs> I'm about to lose half my audience. I fucking not leave if you have to. <laughs> Fuck those. I don't need them in here. Uh, Rotten Apple says, I'll give you 10 bucks if you call Aggie and tell him Rotten Apple said you were the realest pigger that ever lived. Uh, I guess I could do that for 10 bucks. Uh, let's talk about why they're pathetic bigs. As Digibro once famously said, he's... He likes illustrations of little girls getting fucked. That's pathetic. You, you're not interested in a fully grown woman who is your size. You need to have that power and control over a literal child in order to get sexually aroused. I don't know. That, that seems pretty pathetic if you're afraid of adult women and only attracted to literal children. Yeah, well, then it also doubles down because... The people who are generally interested in that stuff, like, really never interact with women, even at all. So it's like... Well, you'd you be know, shocked. Digibro and his fiance, who was a woman, and assumedly having passionate lovemaking with, uh, they drew this kind of pornography together as a couple. Well, they're... You know, women are innocent. They're, they're also into that kind of stuff, too. I'm just... uh. I don't know, because for me, it's funny when you say, like, oh, they want control over a child. That's At the end of the day, it's like, they they have control over nothing, really. It's like, I don't understand their mindset on it. And it's Sai just, even said, like, for him, the fetish is he wants to be the girl. <laughs> <laughs> Biggs just breaks out laughing. <laughs> That's so, that's even more pathetic on like <laughs> such great heights. Oh, we got a Chai sighting. What's up, my friend Chai? That's right. Hey, hey, come here. Want to come say oh hi? Oh my God. Come here. Yeah, she's like, grab her by the pussy. Me. There you go. We got Chai. Hello. 
Should we put so cat cool. owners on the list at some point? I, I think our people will have our back in the vote. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of times uh, our podcast is just seen as two gay guys and their cats talking about stuff. <laughs> That's, yeah, so. it's, it's a long tradition. Uh, do we have any arguments for why these people are not pathetic and they're actually super cool chads for having their... Because Digibro thinks he's like a, some revolutionary, like standing up for this... Uh, standing against censorship. You know, it, we hate censorship, right, Biggs? You got to be PC. Call them what they are. They're maps, okay? Don't be rude. Well, not necessarily, Biggs, because a lot of the argument is that this lowly is 1,000 years old, so not really a minor. It's That's what they though. say. <laughs> I know. Trust me, I know. Because I remember when I played uh, Genshin there for a little bit when it first came out, there were people like raving over and like making weird drawings of uh, one of the characters. I can't remember her name. But then they're like, oh, it's not a child. It's a zombie. They've been alive for like 500 years. They're undead. I'm like, you guys are nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, should we let them vote then? I don't know if we have much else to add to this discussion. Yeah, this should be the coldest take of the things we have on the list. <laughs> I don't know. I thought two would score a little higher. How do I put this? Is it is it called lowly con? Like a lowly connoisseur? Is that what that means? Well, what does the con I, part mean? I, I assume it's... I'm going to put lowly connoisseur. But actually, no, that's too hard of a word to spell. Let's put lowly cons. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend I know how to spell connoisseur. Uh, just assume that this word means people who like lolis and go vote on it. <clears throat> yeah, now you, now YouTube's going to, like, flag this poll and, <laughs> like, delete the video or something. Why have loli here before talking about actual pedos? Because I, I was referring back to the Psy podcast. So, I mean, we'll probably get that on there eventually, right, Biggs? I mean, I mean this is an indefinite list, so I imagine yeah. so at some point it'll be brought up. The only way this list stops is when we hit episode 365 of Monkey and Biggs 365. So we, we have a limited amount of time to make sure all the most pathetic things make it here. Well, that's the problem. It's like the pathetic list is almost like One Piece. It just doesn't end. You might be shocked, Biggs. It, it actually will be ending within a couple of years. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's going to be a, a hard day. Uh, yeah, we got a lot actually... of pedophiles in the audience because uh, this only has 67 votes. You guys can, nice. like, stop watching. It's fine. I won't be offended if you leave. Like, I, again, we don't need you, but... Yeah, I'm fine losing, like, 35% of the audience. If, if they're under lowly, they can leave. I, w I will not be offended. Uh, but this is going to end at about 66. So that is so sad. <laughs> we have a... I think our audience is going on because our audience is fucking pathetic at this rate. I'm putting them on right now. Yeah, the audience. Yeah, our own audience. Oops. Uh, undo that. Lowly enjoyers. What was the score? 66? Yep. What a sad day. Okay. Yeah, let's do a quick vote. Uh, our own audience. <laughs> this audience vote yes or no on the pathetic it's kind list. of a scary metric when you think about it like a third of our audience is just openly pedophiles well basically. i don't think that's true they just don't think that they're pathetic they're you know we're making a real reach here but it is fun to make fun of these people and how insecure do you have to be to vote no on this one <laughs> like ah, oh, no i don't want to call myself pathetic no <laughs> Well, this is going to tie with uh, the Crisis <clears throat> King Crybabies at this rate. 77 again. Is 7 not Jesus' number? Was it like a miracle of God that it, the Crisis King scored 77? Yeah. This is also sitting at 77. Wow. If we do Satanists, will it get 66? Good. Okay. People are saying uh, that's why the lolly one got 66. Because it's satanic? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, this is currently at 77. And we're at half the viewers, so that's yeah. usually where we end. Okay. Our audience is, you know, right up there in the top three, technically, tied for third with a bunch of other things. But let's throw this up there, and then we'll get into some JoJo. And I'm putting you guys legit number three, because fuck you guys. 
You guys are more pathetic than me. I win. I win! Our audience. There we go. <laughs> Who's pathetic now? Not me. You. Yeah, I kind of agree with Celio at this point. Wait, what do you say? Pranksters, pranksters should not be that high up compared to what's on the list now. <laughs> hey, we didn't make. We only made the list. We didn't make the numbers. It's <laughs> some some idiot pranksters are apparently more pathetic than actual pedophiles. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have not done actual pedophiles yet. We just did people who enjoy Loli. I think there is a uh... a very large distinction there. That's. I will agree with them on that. Being a predator on actual living children is different than a, a drawing. So I'm hoping that actual yeah, pedophiles is like 99. I guess I sh probably shouldn't get into this conversation now since we could talk about it later. But I feel like Lolly is the pedophile as weed is to like harder drugs. It's like the gateway. Sure. I could see that. Yeah. So should we move on to our JoJo review then? Sure. And Shoe Hunter says your next line is so anyways. I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> so anyways. Yeah, yeah, he's got me there. <laughs> well, folks, you've been waiting for it, and it's finally back. JoJo 190. We're reviewing every episode of the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure anime. And today we're discussing the first five episodes of part two battle strategies what the fuck did you say it was called big battle tendencies battle tendencies and boy do they battle a lot uh if if i thought that the original series was you know a, a good pace good clip uh this is like on overdrive there's like three boss fights in every episode it's insane <laughs> so before we get too far into it my first thing i've been wondering and i was gonna ask you this when you texted me about uh one of the episodes I was like, no, I gotta save it for the show. What are your initial thoughts on the art change, on the style change? And it's not really something I picked up on, to be honest, Biggs. Is it that different? Yeah, that's like a, a huge part of watching JoJo's each season and how different the styles change. And like, for me too, is also like the, the color palettes are crazy different than the first one. That might be my autism speaking because I, I don't really pick up on that or pay too much attention. It just, you know, it's just a cartoon to me. Uh, Fair enough. But let's dive in because we're, we're skipping a generation. I thought that JoJo would be a generational story where, you know, passing the torch to your son. But oh, no, uh, the, the Joe that we know who died on that boat, his own son died in what I have to assume was World War I. And I said that he was a soldier. So now we're with his grandson, and the only family left is, uh, you know, to Joseph. This is Joseph, right? The new one? Yeah. Joseph, Joe Star, and his grandma, Irina Pendleton. They're living in New York, and a bunch of crazy shit from their past, or from Irina's past, is going to come back to haunt. And, and thankfully, this JoJo is extremely talented at fighting and, and using hockey or whatever the fuck. What, what is the name of this shit in the show? The power <laughs> system. Yeah, Hamon. He's we don't have to watch him train or nothing. He's already great at it. So that was fun. We immediately get horrible violence. Well that's that's not totally true. He knows how to use it, but he's not well trained in it. I I'd say he's extremely skilled to start off, but just because the, the power scaling is getting so high by the end of these five episodes that he will have to increase his power and abilities but he's clearly more talented in episode one here than his ancestor ever was right to an extent i guess i mean he has pretty good control of it but i guess we don't it hasn't really explained yet like what power level he's technically at i think that'll come in the next five episode chunk uh, the but, fact uh... that he's fighting a pillar man with very little fear or issues would suggest that he's already pretty fucking strong. Yeah, and like I said, he's he's gotten to the point where he can wield it like at will. He's not having that trouble. But I would say he's like pretty much where Jonathan was at the end of part one. Okay. So he's like at the the what would you say? The beginning 
of the next level, I guess. And evidently, I thought that Haman was something that like maybe anybody could tap into, but I guess you have to be born with the ability and that the the middle Joe of this family did not get the powers. It skipped a generation. Yeah, and that I guess that was something I didn't necessarily understand at first because like when Zapelli is explaining it in the first part, he's like, yeah, everyone can do Hamon. They just have to learn the technique or something. And then now it's like... Uh, did yeah, they I fuck up? From... See, I don't know. I I can't say much until we get further into the show, mm. but it's like... Yeah, it is kind of strange that it comes off as like a, a genetic thing. Okay, so we start off. It's uh, 1930s New York City, and there's a little rascal running around... Little black boy named Smokey. I have to assume his surname is McPlant. Smokey the Bandit. Smokey McPlant. And he gets in, into some trouble. He steals some shit from JoJo and, and gets caught by the police. And this is when we discover the kind of man that Joseph Joestar is. He, despite being robbed by this child, he still takes his side over the police and, uh, very violently assaults the police after they wipe a booger on his face. And I love how specific and violent the action is on this show. Because when you think of something like Dragon Ball Z, it's really more of blunt force. Like, it's just big punches. The idea is that this punch is strong enough to, like, break through a mountain. Like, that's the idea of the action. Or I'm going to shoot a beam at you. But here it's, I'm going to flick something specifically at the trigger finger uh, the, uh, while you're holding a gun and we're going to like see the bone crack and shatter and it's going to be just very specific in the violence and and that is throughout all five of these episodes i fucking love that i love guys getting fucking cactus shit blown up in their face the violence here is so much better than just generic anime violence right yeah i think it's great the fight scenes man i really gotta give it to them when so I, I haven't read all of the manga, but when you read it and you're like <clears throat> watching these fights unfold in the manga, I feel like the animators did like perfect at executing like the 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 thought behind it. You know what, I'm, what am I trying to say? Like the way he pictured it while while drawing the panels and stuff is exactly how they executed it in the animation. I think it's great. Can you uh, fill me in? I might have forgotten a lot of part one because the character of Stryzo is back and he's, I, I'm thinking, oh, he's going to be the big bad villain of this arc, but uh, he does not last too long. Can you remind me what the fuck did Stryzo do in part one? So do you remember uh, during, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the the final fight with Dio. The three guys that came in, and there's the guy that got, like, frozen, and he was, like, a talking head at the end. He was, like, in the fireplace or whatever, and then they shattered his frozen head or something. And then there's the bald guy that was, like, the master of Hamon that showed up. He was, like, the, the trainer. Stryzo was the third guy. I don't think he really said a whole lot, but he was part of those three that showed so up. So I was right to not remember this character. Yeah, I mean, I even kind of forgot that he existed, and I had... This is like my third time watching through. Well, he, he was inspired by Dio and he says, hey, I want all that power, but I'm not going to go crazy with it like Dio. I just <clears> want to be this immortal, badass vampire dude. And I also want to kill Joseph Joestar and Irina Pendleton because I, I guess they know too much. Or why does he want to get revenge yeah. on them? So the reason he's trying to kill them is because he wants to kill anyone with the, the knowledge of how Dio was defeated. Okay. So that way he's unstoppable, basically. Uh, spoiler alert, he does get stopped pretty quick. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they they have a great fight in a little restaurant. And uh, JoJo, he's anticipating this danger because underneath his trench coat, he's hiding a, a full Tommy gun. And he just fucking blasts the dude and, and unloads a thousand bullets into him. And my favorite part of that scene, too, was the realism of how the crowd reacted. Like everyone started freaking out, screaming like murder, murder. And even Smokey's like, dude, what did you just do? You just killed that guy. And he's just like, oh, that's fine. You'll see. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> I was waiting for this guy. And Smokey's like, that doesn't change the fact you just shot him in broad daylight. Would you consider <clears throat> this to be a <clears throat> gag manga? 
or is it more um, supposed to be serious action? Because a I lot would, of when they explain their attacks or like their weapons, like it feels so insane that you would think it's a joke. And I think the beauty is that they take it 100% seriously. And I do have some examples for you. I guess I didn't really think of that before. So but they, I would say it. The, the, Strizo the, has a scarf and he explains that the scarf is made out of 300,000 rare beetles whose stomachs have like the the purest form of hamon and like it, that's ju that's just comically insane like I, I knitted this scarf out of 300,000 magical beetles but we're just supposed to take it as like oh man how's it gonna get past that but it's it's objectively funny right yeah that's what I was gonna say I don't know if they like they obviously put a lot of thought into it but I, I don't think they were meant to like take it too seriously <laughs> I don't know. I think the characters, t you know, take it seriously, but it's, well, yeah. it's funny for us. You know, right. any other anime might have like, uh, oh, he introduces the the beetle scarf and then like one of the characters who whose job is to like have their eyes poke out and scream in the corner. Like, they go, oh, my God, you know, that kind of stuff. But they don't do it. Yeah. They don't play it as a joke. Right. They play it like well, this I is guess... a real weapon he has to go up against. Yeah, I guess uh, the way I'll put it is. The way. Just the idea behind it, I feel like the writers like, yeah, this is supposed to be a, a little comical, but as far as like the dialogue and stuff goes, yeah, they the characters take it seriously. Yeah. Uh, he they run away because it, you know, you you can't stop this immortal vampire, and uh, Strizo takes a reporter hostage up on the bridge, and JoJo's like, I don't even know who that is. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and I thought that was really <laughs> funny. <laughs> Yeah, so, <clears throat> and I think that was, I think what, what Joseph was trying to do is like, you know, I don't care, I'm I'm the type of person that, like, if I don't know him, it's not my problem kind of thing. I think ultimately he was just trying to trick Strizo into just letting her go and coming down to fight him. Because then obviously Strizo, like, rips her molar out, and then he <laughs> yeah. immediately flips his switch. Yeah. And he's like full fight mode, so yeah, that was that was straight out of a, a Serbian film, like just pulling out this woman's teeth one by one. That's that's pretty gnarly. And then later on, uh, after he, Jojo wins the day and saves her, like she slaps him and said, "Why'd you call me a, a hussy?" And he didn't even remember what he was like all the <laughs> shit he was talking. No, he said, "Why would I fight for an ugly girl?" <laughs> she okay. got mad that yeah, he called her ugly. Yeah, uh, how does he defeat uh, Strizo? There, there was one good move I liked because uh, Strizo keeps shooting laser beams out of his eyes. So yeah, so he, <laughs> he takes a like a whiskey glass. He, he takes a shot glass. Head. I thought it's just like a little shot glass, and he like deflects it like magic cylinder. Well, it was it was decent size. That's why I uh, said like whiskey glass was like that big. But yeah, he puts it on his forehead and like fills it with hamon, so like the the beam like goes inside and reflects back yeah. out. That was really funny. Yeah, that was good. And Strizo warns him, hey, you think I'm bad? You got to look out for these pillar men. The pillar men are coming. And I am I assume I'm not supposed to completely understand, but here's here's my thoughts on the pillar men. So it, it's kind of like uh, the three-eyed crow. Like we got this dude who's like half alive inside of a fucking tree trunk with a bunch of crazy spooky branches. And the mask from part one that you wear to turn into a vampire, I guess uh, these masks are maybe uh, growing also here, or maybe they're just placed there so ceremoniously. But the idea is these pillar men are the, the ones behind the power that gave us so much grief in part one, and that they don't even use it to like take advantage of people. They just turn people into vampires so that they can absorb their power. So, like, the, the most terrifying boss monster of part one is literally just a lamb for for this new boss. Like, it's just his food yeah. source. It's just his snack that he, that he eats to gain even stronger powers. Like, you know, that's funny. I didn't even think of that that way when I watched this the first time of, like, yeah, the boss of last season is, like, the least of their worries. <laughs> it's yeah, what they're like, eating in this. The thing. new JoJo deals with basically... A, an equal level boss in Strizo and he beats him in two episodes. Yeah. And I think the one thing I like about the way they do it, this like in Jojo is 
like in Dragon Ball, yeah, I can get like, oh, they're fighting somebody stronger and they have to like find the willpower to be stronger themselves, blah, blah, blah. But I like how in this show it shows them like getting like beat to a pulp and mm -hmm. then actually going through and like having this uh like this training arc where they're getting stronger and finding allies to help them and stuff instead of like oh all of my friends are here to support me but they're on the sidelines watching this like a football game <laughs> i kind of uh hey, most of goku's entourage you know they they all put in some shots against frieza when they can but you know ultimately it has to come down to the hero yeah cuz like like in uh, what episode was it? Was it episode three or f I think it was four when he's fighting uh, Santana, and why am I blanking on his name? No, I just had it. the The German soldier that was helping them, Strowman. He dies. Who cares? Yeah, but even he's like, okay, I'm gonna go in and help, and he like runs up the stairs and gets his leg chopped off to help Jojo. Yeah, this is an interesting choice, but maybe not since the, the writer is Japanese. But it, it would appear that with this World War II backdrop, we're going to have Jojo teaming up with the Axis powers to take on an even worse threat. Because he's, he's kind of working with some Nazis. He's kind of working with some Italians. And, uh, I mean, he himself is not Japanese, but his, his god is, his creator. Yeah, Rudolf von Stroheim. Dude, he's such a cool character. I don't know. I think, man, lost potential, right? Well, the Nazis, and did I get this right? The Nazis have a, <laughs> they have a base in Mexico. Did this ever happen? I have no idea. This can't be, so. this can't be based <clears throat> on real life, right? It doesn't sound right. Should I ask ChatGPT? Did the Nazis ever have what a Bases? base a base in Mexico? There is no historical evidence. That's too bad. Sebastian says it was in Brazil. It. I don't think it was because Jojo like rides no, a he motorcycle. Might be saying like the actual like they actually had one in Brazil or something. Oh, okay. IRL. Uh, more like Argentina. Uh, Dank and Doggy, thanks for the 20, but I'm I'm not calling Patchy during our JoJo review, so I'm sorry. Uh, jo so, uh, so with that, that base in Mexico, um, it shows how Joseph fights this guy, and I can't remember his name because I'm terrible with names for some reason. What did you think of that character, the guy that was like stalking him while he's on his motorcycle? The guy who gets cactus in the face? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was just, you know, mini boss fight number one. Like, it lasted five minutes. You could have cut it out of the episode and literally nothing would change. But it was a cool fight. So, 10 out of 10. Yeah, I think what the point of that fight was to show, like, he he's not the brightest. Like, he is kind of a dumb character and he's a little... uh he he doesn't really think things through but he still finds ways when he messes up to like come out the victor because he's like oh i meant to go down by the cactus they're like 80 percent water and they're great for <laughs> like a moan bomb did i something. get tricked because i thought he was being pretty sincere and genuine there like it actually was part of his plan to get his face down in the dirt like that <laughs> so he could get close to that cactus and blow it the fuck up sure I, I, I don't know. Either. That's my interpretation. I feel like this uh, Jojo is I think he pretty was confident. supposed to sound facetious when he said that. And like, yeah, well, how would you know? He... You don't speak Japanese. You can't tell his intonation. True. You have no clue. That's very true. Yeah. That's why you got to watch it in English. Didn't we just do a whole pathetic list about this? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That fight actually lasted five chapters in the original manga. Is that fucking true? I have no idea. Like, is I said, each page each through. chapter is like three pages? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> but he he gets down to the Nazi base in in Mexico, and they've got the the Pillar Man, this big being, and they're, well, they got it inside on. this chamber. You're skipping an important part. What did you think of Tequila Joseph? The way he oh, got that's into true. The base? So he needs to. He's trying to sneak in. And you know these Nazis, if there's anything they love, it's brown women. And these, these Nazis are sexually harassing a bunch of Mexican women 
Uh, Biggs, did you see your own family? Harassing. In that? I would say it was full on sexual assault. He was like, "That's the same fucking thing." And... It's it's all fucking English words, Biggs. Don't differentiate them. They they sure. all have the same meaning. I don't know. I feel like harassment and assault are pretty heavily heavily different. Uh, they're just cupping their ass, you know. But when this was written, that was <laughs> harassment. Today, it would be assault, Biggs. It was a different time. And also, this was the okay. '30s. Like, if you don't grab a Mexican woman's ass. It's probably an insult. Those Nazis were trying to be courteous. Anyways, go on. Uh, so Joseph sees that, you know, th these guys are into Mexican women. What if I become one? <laughs> so he, he shows up to the gate in drag, and they, they don't fall for it, so he just beats the shit out of them. That was so funny. It's it like, was a good one. The guy's straight up like, dude, you have such huge muscles, and your face is, like, so manly. Why would you, why would you even try? <laughs> Wow, Biggs, that's dark. That's a dark thing to say. We just had Toot on the list. That's what the guy at the gate literally said to him. <laughs> you say, if somebody looks too mannish, they shouldn't even try to wear women's clothes, Biggs? Amen. That's despicable. Hashtag cancel Biggs. Uh, so they, they have a bunch of the Nazis. They have a bunch of... Uh, prisoners in this little cell and they say okay one of you volunteer for death the rest of you can go free little boy says oh I, I guess I'll take the hit and the Nazi says okay little boy you go free everybody else is dead I thought that was pretty gnarly and good and they, they want to kill these people and get their blood to put it into the pillar man and that's what wakes his ass up a combination of sprinkler water and human blood wakes his ass up and he is if you thought Dio was strong, this dude is like the ultimate life form. He can basically do anything. Like he can just walk straight through people's bodies and it will like destroy the part that he walked through. He can uh, compress his body and twist it up so that he can fit inside of a two inch vent so that he can escape from his prison. Uh, what other powers does he have, <clears throat> Biggs? Uh, so he also, I think we discussed before how they like take the the body of people and they can like suck it in to take their their life power i guess and then he also has like this ability to turn his extremities like that's kind of being like super flexible but he can like turn it to jelly to like dodge attacks and stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is where the the power scaling is is interesting to me because it's like every episode i think i'm being introduced to the final boss and then it's like, it turns out, no, it actually gets much worse. And by the end of these five parts, there's like fucking like four or five of these exact pillar men. So you know, right when you think it couldn't get any worse, they just multiply it. Yeah. So anyways, the way they fight Centeno, basically Jojo like tries various ways of fighting him. And he just comes to the conclusion that his Simone is not strong enough in its current state to like, to like fight this guy, I guess. And <laughs> He's pretty much like a brick wall, so he's like, okay, well, we'll go back to, like, the way we beat Dio the first time and expose him to the sun. So he starts, like, dragging him up the stairs towards the exit. And, and that's uh, when your favorite character, super mega awesome Nazi man, who I guess he lost his leg at some point during the fight or something, but uh, he's, he's helping Jojo. And uh, Sant Viento, is that how you say this dude's name? Uh, yeah. He The pillar man, I'll just call him that. He, like, fucking jumps inside the Nazi's leg wound to <laughs> go inside his body to prevent himself from going in the sunlight. That was some good body horror. Yeah, that was, that's kind of nasty. And then uh, <laughs> yeah. Stroheim's like, uh, well, I guess to kill this guy once and for all, I'm going to pull out this grenade and detonate myself so he's exposed to the sun. To which uh, ultimately fails, technically. It wasn't until JoJo's, like, Oh, we uh we tricked you like we uh we made you wait too long and now it's high noon and the sun's shining down the well, your only exit, and he uh ends up turning to stone. And that was uh, <laughs> I don't know. It was an interesting way to end that fight by because you expect oh the sun hurts them, they're gonna turn to ash, but then I guess it does explain like oh they turn themselves to stone to stop dying to the sun, but then mm. Yeah. I must have missed that, but yeah, and he's not dead, dead though. Like now they just have him 
locked up under UV lights. So I imagine we'll see. Yeah. And people are saying his name is Santana in the original. Uh, and the ver- version I watched, they called him, it was like a, a Spanish name, like Santa Viento, and it means yeah. the, the Mexican wind or some shit. Yeah, so basically he used a lot of names that got like copyrighted, so they had to change oh. them. Yeah, speaking of which, at, at the end of this section, the, the pillar man, like, there's a bunch of pillar men, and I guess uh, their leader is named ACDC. Yep. Am I, be... I'm supposed to believe this is like an ancient monster of some kind. There's going to be a lot of stuff like that, like in the next parts, especially. So, yeah, I get used to hearing familiar names. Will there be a guy named Arion? Sadly, I don't think Will so. Will he see visions of a future where humanity's dependence <laughs> on technology has doomed us all? So anyways, uh, so after that, it leads into the next thing where they find like the three we're going pillars. to italy baby and so we we meet caesar zeppeli now as much as i loved the original zeppeli uh this his his grandson caesar here he might be the superior character just because he actively hates jojo like he's not <laughs> zeppeli's like oh hey i'm here to teach you i'll be your complete cuck and die for you and caesar's like no fuck that my my grandpa sacrificed himself for some dumb bullshit i'm better than jojo in every way he's gonna throw some spaghetti at me i'm gonna fucking destroy his wine glass with my risotto <laughs> but go ahead yeah. biggs what are your thoughts on caesar zeppeli i think he's a great character and uh I do like the dynamic of them bickering back and forth and uh, <laughs> speed wagons, just like basically like the, the parent here, just be like, stop bickering all the time. You guys need to work together to get this done and stuff like that. Yeah. We forgot uh, to mention speed wagon is still alive. Yeah, he's 50 years older, but I was glad to see more carryover characters from part one. Yeah. So, uh, so then they go to meet Caesar and he's like their contact to go see this next vault like thing tomb i guess with the other pillar men and so they're they're waiting for some german soldier to take him down there and in the meantime they're like giving this german soldier a background he's like about to get married and blah blah, mm-hmm. blah. him and caesar are good buddies. they really like humanizing nazis in this show and they're like oh don't you know the italians and the germans they love each other <laughs> that is like true that. and the japanese yeah so then um so they drive down there, and on the way, it cuts over and shows uh, them trying to keep the pillarmen like stuck in stone by putting like UV lights on them. And what was it? They like a hole open and start sucking in air, and then at some point, like a horn comes out and kills one of the guys, and he gets enough blood to to be able to come out. But I thought it was funny. The way they stopped the UV lights was just like mowing down a bunch of guys and covering them all in blood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, Jojo and friends they go down in this in, down the stairs into the dark cavern and find all the the corpses of the Nazis who just got killed by these pillar men. And I guess the goal of the pillar men is to get some sort of odd jaw stone. Don't know what that means. And they're reporting to Master ACDC, and that's pretty much where we leave it. Uh, so the no no it's not where we leave it because uh yes uh, Caesar's friend who you're talking about he he does get killed and, and now he's pissed and we know that Caesar is a lot stronger than Jojo but is he strong enough to fight three pillar men at once that's the cliffhanger yeah and uh so the the power dynamic between the three pillar men is there's cars there's ACDC and then there's um wow well, just forgot his name. Do you remember the third pillar man's name? No. Uh, Jojo part two. But Biggs, I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, I need to go to the bathroom, so we should end this podcast within one minute. <laughs> it was uh, Wamu. That's right. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the power dynamic there is Cars is like the leader. ACDC is like the, the co-leader. And Wamu oh. is like their slave, I guess. I thought ACDC really slave, was the leader. Like okay. Their power over both but yeah like uh that's why he's talking to cars the most okay we will be back in a month with five more jojo episodes uh next week on the monkey and big show should we 
bust out some actual espionage? Should we actually play some real Jackbox games with the chat? Yeah, sure. That'd be great. Okay, um, I got a shit. So, so, so goodbye, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> that, that Wendy's that I got for free is going in. straight through me. <laughs> He's waited long enough. Thanks to everybody for donating and watching and whatever the fuck you did. And sorry I, to that guy who gave me 20 bucks to call Patchy. Try that again when I'm streaming alone. Pretty fucking rude to expect me to interrupt talking to Biggs to do that. But <laughs> see you next time, folks.